I'm Deceased Crab. Let's play with regular expressions. Now, this might be confusing to some of you, and I have to admit, this is not a computer or video game. This is seriously programming. Regular expressions are a tool that was introduced in Sed and Awk back in the day. They later got turned into Pearl by Larry Wall, who is great, and uh, now they're in pretty much every modern language. C++ has regular expressions for the finally, finally at time, for the first time actually. Um, Python has it, Ruby has it, you name a programming language or scripting language, they've got regular expressions. This is going to be some boring code stuff, so if you want to stop watching, I'll totally understand. But, you know... At the very least, my soothing voice and my sense of musical taste will keep you going. And you might learn something, because I don't think they're teaching it in the schools as much as they should. Now, regular expressions are a sometimes food. Not like vegetables and cookies, but I mean, regular expressions are seriously a sometimes food. You probably wondered about the window here. This is Firebug. It is a, an extension for Firefox. It allows you to execute arbitrary JavaScript. Very helpful when you're writing or debugging anything. And this is a line from Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I've given it a variable name. Now I can access it. Now I can do crazy things to it. You're probably wondering, what does any of this have to do with regular expressions? Well, this is a regular expression. In JavaScript, you use the dot .match ability to launch this regular expression. Now, right now, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, I tell you, this is going to find every single word that begins and ends with a vowel. A lowercase vowel. So we've got one, and we've got I. I could very easily change that to an uppercase vowel. Yeah, okay. Well, there's no uppercase vowels to be found there. That's fine. Cool. No one's judging. So, let's start with the basics. Here we have rhyme. If we want, we can see if rhyme has the word mariner in it. I'm pretty sure it does. Let's take out all this convoluted stuff. We're just looking for mariner. Okay, it doesn't have mariner in there anyway. That's a lie. Let's turn on case and sensitivity. Okay, Mariner, there it is. So we had it look for a literal expression, Mariner, those letters. You can have it look for normal ASCII letters, you can have it look for Unicode. You've got capabilities, you've got options. Now, before I go on too much further, a lot of people give regular expressions a bad rap. Sometimes they're not as fast to process, sometimes there are better ways to solve a problem. But, this is just one possible tool in your set of tools that you can use, and if you want to make holes in something by taking a screwdriver and hitting it with a hammer to make a hole in the object, that's fine by me. If you don't want to build a hole punch from scratch, go right ahead. So, we can search for literals. Now, let's search for anything and everything. So there's dot. What is dot going to match? Dot is going to match the first I. That's this thing right here. This I. Dot is the wild card in regular expressions. Not asterisk, dot. Asterisk is different. So if you want it to match everything, you can. You can tell it to match everything. Let's tell it to match zero or more dots. Okay, that's the whole thing. It's got a dot 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 in there to summarize, but it captured the whole thing. Good! So we know how to use dot, and we did a sneak ahead to look at asterisk, which gives you zero or more of whatever you just told it to look for. If I tell it to look for Mariner star, then it's really looking for zero or more R's there. Let's make another variable. There, stuff equals Mariner. So if I do stuff dot match Mariner star, it's gonna match the whole thing. If I do stuff dot match Mariner, 
it's just going to match the first Mariner. So that's cool. It's neat. But you don't need to use literals all the time. You can have it look for digits. I wanted to find digits in the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Oh shoot, Coleridge didn't include any. Well, that's lame. Uh, let's make a new Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Rhyme. Let's see, equals 1001001 SOS. Yeah, that sounds like Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. All right, so new rhyme is there. Rhyme after rhyme. All right, and let's see new rhyme dot match. Open up your regular expression with the forward slash. Have it look for backslash D. This will match any digits from zero to nine. And go, it matched the first one. I want it to match everything in there, everything. So how about we put a G on there, global. Have it match them all. So now I've got a couple different results. It matched that, 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 that. Everything but SOS. Okay, we can go on from here. We can have it look for words. Let's say I want it to look for word characters. Well, what is a word character? That is an underscore, A to Z, capital A to Z, or zero to nine. So it's gonna match everything. Now, I just want it to match SOS, so we need to do something with digits. Well, let's have it do everything that is not a digit. So, capital D, backslash capital D, will match anything that's not a digit. That's a tab, that's a new line, that's a uh, letter, an underscore, unicode, whatever the heck. As long as it's not 0 through 9, I'll match it. <laughs> Great, it did. It matched all sorts of spaces. Speaking of spaces, that's a thing too. You can match the white space. There it is. Or you can match everything that's not the white space. Do you see the overwhelming power in regular expressions yet? I mean, if you're bored to tears, turn it off. I'm having a lot of fun. So, we've gone over white space. We've gone over word matching. We've gone over digits. Now it's time to go over B. What is B? B is the boundary. Let's have it look for... Uh, let me look at stuff. Stuff is not good. Stuff equals new things to say and spell. Alright, so stuff is different now. Now let's make a regular expression where stuff is actually useful. Hmm. We'll have it look for a word boundary. And then we'll have it look for the letter T. Uh, anything. And then we'll have it look for S. And then we'll have it look for another word boundary. Surely this will work. I should get things, right? Yes, it did work. That's cool. I wasn't actually expecting it to. But it did. So now is a good time to talk about rolling your own character class. Let's say I just want vowels. Say A-E-I-O-U and Y. Why not? I could match that in stuff. So stuff dot match that. And find all the vowels. How many vowels are in stuff? If you're getting really crazy with the JavaScript, you can just ask for the length. But that is outside the scope of what I'm doing here. So we've got all the vowels. All right, how about the things that begin and end with vowels? So we've got the vowel. And we're going to need another vowel. There might be zero or more things in between. And there's going to be boundaries on either side of it. Huh. Okay, I did this wrong. So let's see. What's stuff again? New things to say and spell. Oh, um, well, that's why. What if we change stuff? I... Let's try that. Okay, it didn't like that either. Clearly, I have no idea what I'm doing. 
up. Wait, yes, I do. Case sensitivity matters. Oh, that's not exactly what I wanted. Well, here's the thing about regular expressions. They're going to catch everything they possibly can within a boundary. So it caught all of this. That's no good. Now, why did it do that? Because A and E, and it caught everything between an A word boundary A and E word boundary. That's lame. So we need to tell this, instead of catching all of that, to catch anything that is not a space. And give that star. Or, you know, I could just do that. Or I could do that. But let's do that. There we go. So you saw me do this by putting the caret, that little uptick symbol at the beginning of that character class, it tells it, all right, catch everything but the following stuff. So I can type in all the letters of the alphabet if I wanted. And if it had any of that stuff, it wouldn't catch it. Or white space. Mm, basically it would just catch digits. That's really complicated, but you know, it's cool. Where were we? Ah, quantifiers. So we've already seen asterisk. Let's take a look at rhyme. So rhyme not match. Let's give it W star. So that'll match zero or more word characters. The first one it sees. Okay, fine. But what if it was plus, and then it has to match one or more word characters? It's going to catch the same thing. You're just going to have to trust me that that would work. Oh, I've got an idea. What if we have it match the word, the letter P, and then at least one more P? Actually, let's just have it match P one or more times. And it catches PP from Stoppeth make it global and ah, nab it. I can make it global and see if it catches any more. It does. It catches from stopest. I once sent somebody the entirety of Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner over instant message just to annoy them. Fun times. So if I have it catch it star, you see it catches a it catches a lot of zero Ps. Don't have it look for P star. That's dumb. What if I tell it to look for P two or from two to seven times? Anything? Yes, it finds that. How about from one to seven times? It finds that. One to one times. Well, of course it found those. One to infinite. Sure. So you can specify exactly how many you want with number and optional number right here. So those are quantified. Oh, you know what? I forgot one. Let's have a variable set up. New stuff equals behavior. See, I'm American. So let us new stuff dot match behavior. Okay, it matched it. But all of a sudden, is that how you spell it in England? Behavior. I, I don't know. They just throw U's into things in British English. I'm not making fun of them. It's just different to me. But now I can't find it. What if I want it to look for a U, but if I do this, it's not going to match on the American version. So what if the U was optional? Zero or one U's? Okay, so that matches. 
because of this little optional U. Now let's set behavior back the way it was. And still matches. I, I don't even know if that's out of spell behavior. I'm... Maybe it's behavior? No, never mind. So that's question mark. You got zero to one, uh, zero or more. You got one or more. You got arbitrary number to infinite. Arbitrary number to another arbitrary number. And you've got zero or one. You see what we can do with this? So many things. Regular expressions are powerful. A lot of people will tell you don't use them for things like parsing out HTML tags or XML tags because blah 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 and if you use regular expressions you have two problems. Whatever, those people are suckers. Use it when it works, when it feels right and when it's not going to completely crash the system. And I don't want to hear sass back otherwise. Don't like it? Get out. There are a couple other regular expression functions you can do other than just match. Matching is nice, but what if we throw it into an if statement? If new stuff dot match behavior and return true. Okay, good. What if I replace this U with a capital T? It's still true because it's an optional thing. What if it's behavior? Undefined. Well, that returned false. So you can do if statements with it. Very cool! Conditionals! Everybody loves those. They should. Let's try something else. Let's take a look at the rhyme of the ancient mariner. I have decided I want to split this into several pieces. I want to split this here, and I want to split this here. Now we already have a regular expression for that. I showed it to you at the beginning, back before you understood what the heck was going on. You look, oh, hang on, I screwed up. There's one part of this I haven't gone over. So I've gone over the word boundary. Beginning of a word boundary, a vowel, case and sensitivity matters. Some words, more vowel, and word boundary. But I haven't gone over these parentheses. And these are important, because watch what happens. So because of that, I have two results. If I take these out, what do I get? I still get two results. But let's... Bad example. All right. Let's make a new one. Dot match. Stop. Dot star. Wait a minute. Whoops. Don't hit the enter key. W star. So this will probably match on the word stoppeth. So here's what happened. It did match the word stoppeth. It caught the stop and it caught every other word that it found in the next row. So when it reached the white space over here, it stopped. I could have thrown the boundary in there just to be safe, but you know, that's probably not doing too good for the processing. So maybe not do that. I don't know. I actually don't know how the inner workings of these things go. So you've got stoppeth, but we also got path. That's the second part. So first you get the results, but then you get everything you captured in parentheses. So you can tell it to capture certain things in parentheses just for the heck of it. In Perl, this would store it anything captured in a parentheses in a value called dollar sign one. In JavaScript, like we're seeing here, it just returns it as part of the array where the answers are. So theoretically, you can have it match that and then pull the answer, what you want, path out of uh, the first entry, the index one entry of that. It's arrays, it, it starts at zero and it goes to one. So that's, that's entry one 
And if you go up here, it's stoppeth would be zero. So you have that ability. So what we have here in this horrible mess is that I'm telling it to capture everything that is begins with the boundary, starts with a vowel, some words, another vowel, and a boundary. And in the original that I showed you, it had parentheses around that. It didn't need to have parentheses, but that was just an extra level of capturing it. If I wanted to reference that stuff later, I could within the same regular expression by using backslash one for the first paren captured thing, or backslash two for the second, and you get the idea. So if we have their repetition equals one, one, two, two, hello, we can wrap it. Tap completion is your friend, dot match. Want it to go. Oh, yeah, there's more I have to go over. Crikey. Well, we're going to have it look for percent backslash w plus. We're going to have it look for a space. A backslash one for the first paren captured thing in this. If you need to stop and go back just to follow what I did, you can do that. It's a video. You have control. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to copy paste this and two. So this is very likely going to match one, two, hello. And then I'm going to get one and two as the captured bits. I love that. So like I thought, it captured this thing. That was the full thing it matched. And the first bit it captured was one. And the second bit it captured is two. Now, if I wanted to be really careful, I could anchor this to the beginning of the string with the caret. You put the caret here, and it's going to anchor at the beginning of the string. So if I look for one at the beginning of the string, if I look for one at the beginning of the string, good, it finds it. Let's change repetition to eight. And now if I look for one at the beginning of the string, I find nothing. Likewise, I can look for hello at the end of the string. But if I change hello to SARS, which is terrible, I don't find it anymore. It could be in there. Hello, SARS. And I'm still not finding it, because it's anchored in the back. Since I'm talking about open and close parentheses, I should probably talk about a neat thing I figured out not too long ago. Let's say I've got the 112 thing. 1122 thing. Here we go. And I can match this to it. But you know what? I just want 1122 and I don't want it to give me 1 and 2 as well. I don't care. I just want to make sure that it happened. So I can tell it to look for this, but not capture. So what I'm going to do... Wait. If I don't capture, I can't use... Ugh! Wow, I'm bad at this. You know, I didn't even cover uh, alternation. Or statements. Alright, let's do that now. There. Congress equals the devil. But aside from that, Bob Dole. So we've got Bob Dole here. Nothing against Bob Dole, really. So, let's have it match... I want it to match a Bob Dole, but I also want it to match Jack Kemp, who was his running mate in the 1996 election. So I've got this or here, and it matched Bob. That's good. If I really wanted, I could put it as Bob Dole or Jack Kemp. I might be screwing this up. No, I'm not screwing it up. So it found Bob Dole, and it... Oh, I don't know what that last undefined is about. I should probably do it this way. There we go. So I wrapped the whole or statement in a parentheses. It's like, I want to find Bob Dole or Jack Camp. I found Bob Dole. But it captured it as well. I don't want that. So do this. Looks weird, doesn't it? 
That tells it, okay, we're in a parenthesis, but don't capture it. Someone's probably making a mess with an or statement or trying to wrap their heads around these things. Just don't capture it. It'll be fine. So what I'm wondering is, if I do that on here, will it still work? And the answer is no, because it's not capturing. So how can it possibly populate backslash one or backslash two? Okay, we've got the or statement, which is this pipe. We've got anchoring, which is this, and this. The only things left, really, are substitute, split, and join. So, let's take a look at the rhyme again. That's boring. I want to replace things. I want to substitute. Hmm, replace. In JavaScript, let's replace. I want to replace this whole Mariner business with, uh, Bob Dole. And you know what? Let's lay off Bob Dole. I don't have anything else to do. Um, mm, I ate a berry. There we go. So I'm going to replace Mariner with I ate a berry. Ha ha ha. It is an ancient I ate a berry. Very good! Help me! Alright. But... What if there were multiple berries? I'm, I'm looking for words duplicated in this. Uh, I should probably go back to new stuff. Or new rhyme. Okay, new rhyme is perfect. Let's replace these numbers in... New rhyme. Let's replace all numbers in new rhyme. Global. We want global. Case and sensitivity. They're digits. It doesn't matter, DC. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to replace that with... What is it? What is it? Oh, right. Pi. We're going to replace them with pi. Because I can. Ha 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 ha. Pi, 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 SOS. Oh, I'm so sorry, Rush. So we did that. So that's the replace function. You give it a regular expression, anything that matches that. The whole thing that matches that, so if you give it um, a longer thing, it's going to replace the whole longer thing with pi. So you won't get too much pi. You don't want to fill up on that stuff. And split. The rhyme of the Ancient Mariner is too long. I want to split it into several pieces in an array. I want to split it into... Well, I basically just want to take my stupid... this thing right here and split it on that. There we go. So it's splitting on the word one it's splitting on the word I, and because I told it to capture it, it's actually giving me those things. The parentheses captured it so I don't lose them forever. Now let's take out those parentheses. Just to prove that I'm not crazy. <laughs> you're doing a let's play of regular expressions. Of course you're crazy. There we go. So when I do it this way, it's consuming the one because I'm not capturing it in any way, even though I'm what is the word? Splitting on it, yes. So if you split on something, it's going to digest it forever, and it will be delicious unless you capture it with parens. Ah! You're all either really bored or really psyched about regular expressions right now. All right, I'm gonna show you one more. I'm gonna show you one more. I'm gonna take the results of this. I'm going to dot join them on uh, I'm going to dot jo join them, yeah. Because I can. You can just glue them back together. If you tell an array to join, it's just going to glue it all back together. And that doesn't require regular expressions, but you can't talk about split without join. So that has been half an hour of really random computer science. There were no video games involved, and... I hope that some of you have at least a faint interest in regular expressions now or found my explanation on regular expressions interesting in some way, I'm Deceased Crab. Good night.